Match night on KFJB TV. It's the Bobcats and the Tigers. That's right, a battle of the Cats at Leonard Cole Field tonight. I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome into our broadcast here on KFJB TV. Our producer tonight, one and only Todd Steinkamp, and on camera, Keith Stewart, as well as Jesse DeMeyer. Looking forward to this one tonight as the Bobcat ladies, they are rolling right now, looking to make it a fifth win of the season as they take on the Tigers tonight. Meanwhile, for the Tigers, they have not been in a whole lot of action. They took on Bettendorf at the trail end of March, and it was a loss. So they're 0-1 heading into this match. Meanwhile, the Bobcats playing their sixth game of the season tonight against the Cedar Falls Tigers. Tigers won this game a year ago, and the Bobcats looking for revenge on their home turf here tonight at Leonard Cole Field. They uh, scored a 10-0 victory on Friday night on the road at Fort Dodge, plus they defeated North on Tuesday night, so they've got some some things going in their momentum. And here tonight, a non-conference victory would mean a lot for this team that is looking to continue to build. We'll talk more about that with head coach Stacy Galima when we come back. This is Match Day on KFJB TV. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Welcome back into Match Day on KFJB TV. Joined by Stacy Galima, head coach for the girls squad, as they are off a of victory on Friday night, ten to nothing, on the road at Fort Dodge. A little bit of a young team. You were telling me about Fort Dodge, but impressive, ten to nothing, and they went out there and took care of business. What impressed you the most about that match on Friday night? Uh, yeah, we kind of just set our, our tone, and any time that we do that in a game, I feel like we've come out very, very well. Um, so it was good to see that do that. You know, three road games, kind of finishing out the week. It was really good to see. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you know, beginning the season, Road Warriors, you're finally at home for the first time looking for your fifth win of the season. But getting able to to get out here on Litter Cole Field, what's that mean? Because obviously there was implications with postseason, but it, it really provides a nice aspect for the rest of your season, being able to have a reliable surface. Yeah, I mean, we're able to practice here in the past. We had to practice elsewhere and, and kind of just use it for games. So it gives us another avenue for that. And then just having, you know, you're, you're able to use it in any weather. So it just adds a lot of aspects, you know, for us to be able to train and, and know that we can consistently have a place to go. The team in good form right now looking for its fifth win? Yeah, I'd say definitely for the most part. Um, we have a cu- couple girls that are still banged up, but um, I think they're they're ready to go and all taped up for today. Yeah. McKenna Coleman, one of those bumped up, uh, kind of a, almost a gruesome looking uh, play uh, as she collided with the keeper on Tuesday against North. How's she feeling? Uh, not too bad. Uh, she played probably 45 minutes uh, at Fort Dodge, so got a lot of good time in and, and I think recovering pretty well. Uh, your ladies uh, have impressed me, uh, impressed me so far this year with uh, Yuri Ramirez kind of in the middle. That's such a that middle f- uh, midfielder is such a key role because, you know, they're looking for passing lanes and then also got to be sharp on the defensive side, too. Yeah, uh, it, it's really hard because people come from all directions. You know, soccer is a 360 degree sport. They have to look for. people in front of them behind them to the side so a lot of times you know if you're you're not as uh you know adjusted to that that position you'll get stuck on one side of the field and i think early on we kind of had that but then yuri carol alexia whoever we put there has really figured it out so that we can have our switches and and you know move the ball as we need to this game a year ago against the cedar falls tigers was six to nothing they lost a senior who scored scored a couple but they bring back a couple ladies who scored a couple goals against you last year what do you know you need to do well against the tigers tonight yeah they're a very talented a team. Um, they always have been. Um, back when I was in school, we played them to go to state. So, you know, they're, they're always playing the best of the best if you look at their non-conference. So tonight we just need to take care of the ball. We need to play at our pace and not get, you know, too sped up. And we need to get, make sure that we don't get stuck in our defensive third because th- I think that's what happened a lot last year. And we just struggled to get out of it. And we need to, you know, s- keep our front foot going forward and, and stay aggressive. Is it to your advantage that you're playing your sixth game tonight and they're pl- only playing their second? I, I would I would say so. I think uh, at this point for our girls, this is kind of something we do. Is It's another day, it's another game. So um, hopefully we can, you know, 
keep it going from where we've been and, and have another good day today. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. The Bobcats and Tigers will check out the starting 11 for both teams when we come back on our countdown to kickoff right here on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Match day at Litter Cold Field, a beautiful day, 63 degrees and partly cloudy skies here at the pitch. All right, let's check out tonight's starting lineups, which are all brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting 11. First off for the Cedar Falls Tigers, coached by Alex Pay- uh, Place. They are 0-1 on the season where they lost 3 to nothing to Bettendorf to open up the season. Number nine, Zoe Zilstra. She'll get the starts and a forward up there. And she had nine goals and one assist last year. Two goals and an assist in this matchup a year ago with the Marshalltown Bobcats. Also, Grace Fober up there on that front line. Last year, two goals in this match. She finished the season with four goals and two assists. She is a senior forward. You look at Buchanan, Ubbin, Runyon, Riley on the midfield. And meanwhile, on that defensive line, Madison Chain as well as Peyton Schmidt, Anna Berger, Emily Benneke, and back there in goal, the keeper tonight, Sophie Showalter. She uh, did allow three goals and had 15 saves earlier this year in their season opener against Bettendorf a year ago. She uh, 26 goals allowed, 118 saves on the season. That's 82%. So that's the starting 11 for the Cedar Falls Tigers. Meanwhile, for your Marshalltown Bobcats, behind Stacy Galima, head coach who we just talked to, 4-1 and one on the season for the Bobcats up there on that front line. Alexia Garcia, McKenna Coleman coming back from inter- uh, uh, injury on Tuesday night against North. She did play against Fort Dodge on Friday, which is obviously good to hear. And uh, obviously getting her back in the lineup is uh, significant. Uh, kind of the placeholder there in the middle of things in the midfield. Yuri Ramirez, she'll be uh, around Iris Brinrostro, Gomez Reyes, as well as both the Gomez Reyes, Carol and Kenya. And back there on the defensive line, some senior leadership in Aubrey Tejada, Sarah Huffman, and Natalie Andrade gets a start tonight along with Georgia Jansen, who the sophomore offers plenty of height on that defensive line. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get you the keys to the match on KFJB TV. <laughs> Match day on KFJB TV. Bobcats and Tigers coming up in just a moment. Let's get today's keys to the match. First off for the Marshalltown Bobcats. Home cooking tonight. Yeah, this is their first match at home. First five matches of the year have been on the road. We'll see if the Bobcats can come out in true form here tonight and get a victory. Of course, uh, really good play on Friday night. Kenya Gomez-Reyes had two goals Alexia Garcia, she's been very strong in the the senior in that forward position. And, uh, of course, 
other goals. First of the year for Stephanie Gutierrez, Sofia Valdez. She got the, her first goal of the year, and uh, it was good to see for the Marshalltown Bobcat ladies. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Cedar Falls find the net. They did not score a goal in their opening game uh, on the season against Bettendorf. Last year, Ella Ubbin, she had 11 goals, nine goals for Zoe Zilstra. So, you know, there's some production. We'll see if they can get it here tonight at Leonard Cole Field. Both teams going to be announced on the pitch as uh, some of the ladies throw it out, some of the prizes, uh, some balls into the crowd before we get going here tonight as kickoff between the Tigers and the Bobcats is next right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodeling. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Rainbow Car Wash has been in town over 40 years. New owners Brett and Kim Canada have been with Rainbow for more than 35 years, focusing on quality, cleanliness, and great customer service. Open 24 hours year-round with two convenient locations. Each location has two oversized truck bays to accommodate large vehicles, all bays except quarters. And for your convenience, newly installed credit, debit, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay featuring swipe or tap to pay, powerful vacuums, and a great selection of vending supplies. Follow us on Facebook at Rainbow Car Wash, LLC. Welcome back to Leonard Cole Field. As both teams still being announced, National Anthem just right around the corner. We'll take one more final timeout, and kickoff is next on KFJB-TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Bobcats in their new uniforms on the new pitch here at Leonard Cole Field on KFJB TV. Excited to have you along tonight. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to get uh, upcoming game alerts and upcoming broadcasts. Tomorrow night, we will be on the road in Des Moines 
as the Bobcats, the boys in action as they take on the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Excited for that one. As the lady, ladies actually uh, take a look at our intro video that we have on KFJB TV. They're checking it out here on uh, the big screen at uh, Leonard Cole Field. So excited about that. As head coach Stacy Galima, final words for these teams as they'll match up here tonight. And last year again, we mentioned Cedar Falls won it three to nothing or six to nothing as they are three and zero oh against Marshalltown in their historic rivalry. As uh, not a long rivalry uh, whatsoever, but both these two teams just separated by about uh, fifty-five minutes uh, up the road. Cedar Falls in their white tops, black bottoms. Bobcats in those dark blue new uniforms. Bobcats written across the front, white numbers. McKenna Colbin out there as well as Alexia Garcia in the attacking position. And Cedar Falls will begin the match with the kickoff and possession here to begin the match. Hopefully had a good experience uh, Viewing the eclipse as clouds have set in, but they were pretty good for the eclipse earlier today. I did not buy a fancy pair of $3 glasses, though, to uh, to view the eclipse. But some pictures I saw online sufficed. And, oh, and it will actually be uh, settled as the Bobcats have won the opening kick. And we'll get underway with the Bobcats with the possession. 40 minutes on the clock in this first half. McKenna Coleman inside the center circle. Coleman back to Huffman, and Huffman disperses off to the far side of the field. Natalie Andrade in that back defensive uh, position on the right. We uh, will see a, pick, a push from behind. Alexia Garcia hit the turf as that's a foul on Cedar Falls, a free kick for the Bobcats. But uh, Andrade, we saw her in reserve role last Tuesday night in our last match for the Marshalltown Bobcat ladies, which they, they won that one on the road. It was a tight one against Des Moines North. Out on the far touchline, Cedar Falls throw in. Bobcats back with a possession, looking towards the middle, looking for Coleman, but just a touch high. She tried to get in the way of that one and get a chest on it, but was not able to. Played up ahead. Georgia Jansen will chase on, and that will be out on the near sideline. Ball always seems to find our very own Keith Stewart over there on the sideline. It's left that one and ushered it out of play. Tejada. Guarding out of that middle defender role or to the far side. A shot taken, but that one well off the mark. A goal kick for the Bobcats. Well, the season has gotten off to a good start for the Bobcat ladies as they look to really grow on. What they did a year ago, especially being such a young team, and this year already with four wins, a four-in-one record into this match here tonight. A senior and Sarah Huffman takes the goal kick. Midfield, Tigers have it. McKenna Coleman trying to challenge. Still challenging Garcia. Cedar Falls reverses all the way to the near side. Look up for an avenue. Sarah Huffman will track the ball down. Trying to get it out of a threat. And an easy save and goal by Esme Chavez. And not quite three minutes into this match. Chavez a little action, but nothing has really given her fits. Gomez Reyes with a nice ball. And almost thought there was going to be a touch there for McKenna Coleman, but she could not quite get to it out on the touchline on the near side. 
Take a look at that play as uh, here momentarily as Alexia Garcia on the replay as she was trying to track forward and make a play on goal, but the Bobcats have not had a shot on goal so far yet. Out at a midfield, Yuri Ramirez challenging. Ramirez, Garcia, that one's turned over. Ramirez got a foot in the way of that one. Physicality will be a thing to keep an eye on here tonight. I know that head coach Stacy Gleeman talked a little bit about that. Pretty tough team for Cedar Falls, and so far, you can see that a little bit with just ability to kind of box out a little bit. Going back to the keeper and Showalter. Showalter will get rid of it at the last second. And a little bit of pressure being put on by the Fords for the Bobcats, but not enough to force an errant turnover and get a threat on the Tigers early on here as we are still scoreless. Just over three minutes gone here in the opening half. Kenya Gomez-Reyes. Gives it over to Carol Gomez-Reyes. Out of the top of the penalty box. Cedar Falls with it back. A good stop there on the defensive line. Up at the top of the penalty arc, a shot taken, and that one's going to be buried in the back of the nets. Boy, the defense just did not quite get in the way of that shot on goal. And it's Cedar Falls 1-0. Olivia Flaherty. Her second goal of the season. And that one at the five-minute mark here in the first. Some long shots taken by Cedar Falls, but none had really threatened like that one, and they were just able to get it over the top of Esme Chavez. At her sixth goal allowed on the season. Long track for Cedar Falls. That'll be out on the end line and a goal kick. Well, the Bobcats in an early hole here tonight. They'll have to battle back. See a little bit of physicality so far for Cedar Falls, especially as they push that ball upfield and getting it towards the middle. And that one with that long strike by Flaherty from the top of the uh, penalty circle or the penalty arc. Ben Rostro. That pass was to nobody. Tahada has seen it off and defense will regather here on a throw in for Cedar Falls. Tahada challenges. Cedar Falls keeping it in the attacking third. And a long shot again for Olivia Flaherty. Actually, that was Ella Ubbin who took that shot right there. Chavez has to come out and makes a gather of that one easily. I thought that goal was by Flaherty, and actually I'm looking, I think uh, maybe the one was just covered up. So I think it is going to be Ubbin who had the, the goal. Ella Ubbin. So that would be her first goal of the season. That'll be ruled Bobcat. Possession on the throw-in. Georgia Jansen to take it. 
Throws it into Yuri Ramirez. Jansen boots it up to midfield. Header by Cedar Falls and then by Carol Gomez Reyes. Now Yuri Ramirez off the side of the foot. A missed kick right there. Carol Gomez Reyes wins it back. Tries to go to McKenna Coleman. Deflected though. And at midfield, Cedar Falls back with possession. A nice pass ahead, but too strong out on the end line. And almost a tough fall over there on the far side by Will O'Reilly. Sophomore ran into the long jump. And the cover that was on that, a little slick. Upman, the senior defender, will take the goal kick. And the goal kick will sell out of bounds on the touchline. A quick throw in for Cedar Falls. Ahead, they'll fire in to Grace Fober. Tahada tracks it down. Georgia Jansen, her kick was awry. And really good shot, but off the mark. She just scored a goal a moment ago as shot there by Ella Eubin. As you see Tejada and Jansen. And then Eubin steps up, puts that one off the mark, off to the left side. A few turnovers in the defensive third here. And another one outside on the edge of the penalty box for Cedar Falls. Pass back towards the penalty arc. Yuri Ramirez gets it upfield to Coleman. That's going to be a handball. And a free kick for Cedar Falls. So you've been just five minutes into this one. She was able to get the Tigers on the board one to nothing, and she'll take the free kick here. I would imagine she'll be aggressive with this opportunity, and she will. And she kicks it in to Esme Chavez. Chavez with the ball, and she'll run it out to the top of the penalty box. Kicks out high near side. And the Bobcats misplay a turnover. Attacking inside. This is trouble. And Ramirez with a touch right there was able to play it out of the box. Cedar Falls with a strong touch, throw in for the Bobcats. Bobcats will go to work quickly, but turnover and a throw back, and this one kicked out on Cedar Falls. That last touch by Madison Chain. Kenna Coleman. Had the throw in for a second, but quickly won by Cedar Falls. Yuri Ramirez trying to find McKenna Coleman. She'll track it down. Near side wing. And just pushed off the ball. And you see that aggressiveness by the Tigers. Paying dividends early here. Good defensive play on the back line by Andrade to shut down a passing lane. Ball deflected to Dahada. Back towards midfield. One right back with Cedar Falls. Passing not quite as crisp as we saw last Tuesday against North. You have been a long shot from way outside. I believe that will be a goal kick. A couple of substitutions. Millie Heitman will check in for the Bobcats. Giselle Hernandez also in for the Cats is Yuri Ramirez. And in for the Bobcats, 10, as well as another Bobcat will eventually come off the field, it looks like. Oh, McKenna Coleman slipped off the side of the field here, I see, as she's 
out and nursing a, an ankle injury from Tuesday night against North in that forward position. So Millie Heidman will be up top at forward. And the sophomore. Maybe trying to put a little bit of pressure on the Tigers. Bobcats have not really had a shot inside so far. You've been strong right there. She says it was deflected. Uh, officials giving a corner kick to Cedar Falls as well. And they'll load up the box. Nearly 15 minutes into the match. One to nothing. Tigers on top of the Bobcats. Well, you've been the senior midfielder heavily involved here tonight. And she's put a lot of shots on goal and also with the corner kick. That one slips all the way through to the other end and it will be out on the end line. It will be a goal kick. And the Bobcats escape. Cedar Falls falling back. Bobcats with a favorable deflection, but a turnover right away up to Eubin. <laughs> Georgia Jansen with a load up right there and a skyrocket towards midfield. And not a lot of purpose with the Bobcats' kicks here tonight. They have been under some pressure. Here's a throw in for the Cats. Jansen thought about taking it. Avenue. Uh, was not quite there a header. Andrade kicks it right to Cedar Falls. Long shot, controlled by Chavez. The far side as Kenya Gomez-Reyes is not able to play that one, a throw in as it was knocked out by Cedar Falls. A little hesitation right there for the Bobcats and something you definitely cannot have against a team like Cedar Falls. I can already tell they smell a little blood in the water. Alexia Garcia giving chase and finally booted over midfield. Kick up to Garcia. Garcia lost it. And Huffman out of play, and that one on the far side. Gonna be back to Cedar Falls on a throw in. Looking for a seam, but couldn't find anything right there. A missed touch, but takes a favorable bounce. Buchanan plays it up into the far side wing. A long track right there for Zilstra. Does save it before it gets to the end line. She's looking for a crosser, and it's out, and a throw in for the Bobcats. Good defensive play by Tejada right there. Tejada to take the throw in. A deflection to Eubin. See a few bits of uh, the black tire chunks, the rubber pellets sit uh, here on the turf at Leonard Cole Field as Asme Chave made the Clean save right there on Eubin's long kick. 
Garcia immediately pushed off the ball. Just, again, that aggressiveness. Here goes Heitman, and she makes a play, and defensive line shuts it down quickly. As Anna Berger there, the senior defender. Fairly confident bunch for Cedar Falls with a 1-0 lead. Eubin ahead. Huffman shut it down, though. And Huffman will just boot that one out of play and let the midfielders catch back up here and line up defensively. Newbin with a long, long shot. It's deflected right back to Cedar Falls, but Tejada scrambles, gets there in time. Huffman with a little bit of a stop there, and the Bobcats will get it out of the box. And a lucky break right there for the Bobcats to not see it a goal. But, boy, Esme Chavez, that was just a hard strike that had her go off her foot. And luckily for the Bobcats, did not result in a deflection and a goal as the Tigers did have a lady in position on the far side with Will Riley. Shot deflected. Georgia Jansen kicks it out to the far side of the box, but Cedar Falls is right there. Esme Chavez down to a knee for the save. A little bit of desperation mode. There was that shot by Cuban, and Chavez just was self-defense. But unfortunately, Cedar Falls, as you saw there, had a lady on the far end. We are about halfway through this first half. It is one to nothing, Tigers. They were up five to nothing in the first half last year in this match. So Bobcats holding a little more of their own in this one, but it's been all Tigers on the right side of your screen in the attacking zone in this first half. A little back and forth play. You've been a push. That should be a foul and a free kick for the Bobcats. You've been a little over aggressive right there. Is she a little bit of a grin on her face knowing that that one was probably coming from the official. Midfield turnover. Not a great pass for the Bobcat ladies. From the penalty arc, it is a clean save for Chavez again. Some of these shots from so far out, they're not a huge threat, but with plenty of power behind them, they, they definitely are not just an easy save. Header by Eubin. And a little bully ball right there. She just takes it away for the Bobcats. Bobcats have it back. A little bit of an advantage right here as they start an attack. A bump. And off the ball was Carol Gomez-Reyes bumped off of it. Cedar falls back in transition. Eubin just kind of motoring through the Bobcat defense. Puts a shot up. It's well off left side. And substitutions. McKenna Coleman back into the match for the Bobcats. Lilia Christian as well. She had a goal on Friday night against Fort Dodge, the junior, or excuse me, the sophomore in Lilia Christian. Official says play had not been started. Kenya Gomez-Reyes was still coming off the far side of the the pitch here tonight. She's kind of looking at her right leg a little bit. Don't know if she had a cramp or what might be bothering her. And the kick is away. A touch on the foot. Cedarfold stopped it, but Tejada plays it ahead. Good passing lane to Garcia. The Bobcats turn it back over. Eubin. Pass Sanchez, long shot off target. 
power by numbers, apparently, for Eubin. Even if they are off the mark, she is not lacking any confidence here tonight and putting some shots, not necessarily on goal, but at least to the way of Chavez. They find Garcia, but immediately she was boxed out and a throw in for Cedar Falls. Kind of interesting here tonight. Only a two-man crew. I was going to say, we don't have an AR on the near side. So both officials kind of splitting up duties a little bit, and the far side official does not have a flag to indicate offside or anything of that nature. But I believe he does have a whistle to act as a two-man crew. You don't typically see that at the varsity level, but... Cedar Falls, a missed touch, and that's out on the end line, a goal kick. In that setup, though, the officials definitely uh, probably earning their paycheck here tonight, that is for sure. Huffman up ahead to Tejada, one touch. It was deflected and almost a threat right there. Oh, boy, you've been out of control. All right, somebody else might want to take a shot for Cedar Falls from this point on uh, every now and then. You have been a goal tonight. She had Cedar Falls on the board, but a couple of shots of hers as of late have been well off the mark. But that's how you lead your team in goals a year ago with 11. And the first Tiger to get a goal this year. Good play defensively. Georgia Jansen hits the turf, and that one off of Jansen. A quick throw in for Cedar Falls, and that's going to be that's going to be a penalty and most likely a free kick. Uh, not quite yellow card territory, but Jansen with the leg way up in the air and the cleat to match, and uh, that will be a penalty every time, especially with a little contact made there. As Eubin will be on for the free kick. There's the initial bump, and then quickly the throw in. And Jansen just, hey, why not? <laughs> Almost contact with the head of the Tiger right there. Esme Chavez misplayed off of her fingertips, and luckily a Bobcat was able to play it out of the box. Madison Chain has possession over to the far side, on the left wing, and now back towards midfield. McKenna Coleman bumped that one away. Garcia misplayed that one. Looking for one of her defenders on the far side. That would be Natalie Andrade. Twenty-six minutes into the match, and the Bobcats have not put a shot on goal. And in fact, if we get a shot down here, uh, Sophia Showalter is. 30, uh, well, 40 yards out from goal as at this point right now. That's quite a ways down there. As you see, she's 40 yards out from goal. As the Tigers take a corner kick. Jansen got in the way of that one. Garcia pushes it out of the box. A threat again. A little bit of English on that one. But a clean save by Esme Chavez. Rhea Buchanan, two goals last year. She took that one from outside the penalty box. Twenty seven minutes in. Throw in from the far side. Shot taken. Esme Chavez with a clean save. She'll run out near side. And the drop kick is away. She'll come to the near side. A high bounce. 
Georgia Jansen ahead to Millie Heitman. Heitman tracking. And that one out on the touch line. Cedar Falls throw in. Grace Fober is going to check in. As well as Olivia Fober for Cedar Falls. Kenna Coleman tried to get in the way of that one to win back possession. Really quickly. Cedar Falls back in nearly the attacking third. Ball deflected. Garcia gives chase. Cedar Falls seems to have just a little bit of a height advantage here tonight, which is helping them kind of extend those arms out and boxing out some of the Bobcats. Lee Heitman with an opportunity, but just out. Good job to try to create right there, but just could not get to it and keep it in. Jansen will take the throw in. Yura, Yuri Ramirez, Kenya Gomez Reyes. Check back in for the Bobcats. Alexi Garcia. And Millie Heitman check out. Elia Christian trying to get the Bobcats involved offensively, but just an answer defensively. That back line has been really just a stone wall tonight for Cedar Falls. Bobcats have not been able to break through. A launch back towards midfield and a throw in for the Tigers. Never love to have your forwards playing back on your defensive end for any length of time like the Bobcats here tonight. Not really many counterattacks. Yuri Ramirez ahead. Trying to find Christian right there, but ball can't find a seam. Good job by Kenya Gomez-Reyes. Boxing out Cedar Falls. Getting it back into the attacking third. And just pushed out of there. Madison Chain was able to win it back. Gomez-Reyes, though, wins it back for the Bobcats. Looking for Yuri Ramirez. Misplayed. Ramirez tracks and saves it from the far touch line. Just as you see the Bobcats potentially with an opportunity to get into the attacking zone. It just seems that it's shut down. And Huffman will let it drift out of bounds right there. Yuri Ramirez to take the throw. And actually, I believe they're going to say it was Cedar Falls. Huffman thought all along, though, that it was off of Cedar Falls. That's why she let it sail out of bounds. Eubin takes to the top of the penalty arc. Off the top of the crossbar. Chavez with a hand on that one. Looked like she jammed her finger as she's kind of Flexing her left hand and shaking it off. That'll be a corner kick near side. But you've been right there. Just dribbled to the top of the penalty arc and a turnaround shot past two Bobcats. And Chavez trying to keep the Tigers off the board with just eight minutes before halftime. A header on the corner kick, and it's out of play. Oh, 
Jansen off the goal kick. Jansen with a little bit of uh, a dose of what the Tigers have been serving up here in this first half. But unfortunately, that just a push from straight behind. So penalty on Georgia Jansen and a favorable kick from the near side. A free kick, and Eubin will be the one to take it. Bobcats going to defend back towards middle as potentially a crosser here. As May Chavez will have to be ready for a kick on goal. That one sneaks through and trouble. A shot taken. And I think that was Buchanan who got a touch on that one, but launched straight ahead for the Bobcats. And um, near hazard, escaped right there for the Bobcats. Still one to nothing on the Marshalltown High B scoreboard here in the first half. Take a look at some of our highlights coming up at halftime here at Leonard Cole Field between the Bobcats and the Tigers. On the edge of the box still Olivia Flaherty. Tracks it down into the corner, fires back, and a turnover back to Carol Gomez-Reyes. But one back again by the Tigers. Nearly a penalty by the Bobcats there again. Ball slips through, and Chavez will cover it up. Uh, Lily, a Christian, almost a push right there. We're going to see a penalty, but that would have been from far out, about 40 yards from goal. Drop kick away. That one high for Yuri Ramirez. McKenna Coleman tried to save it from going out. It will be a throw in. Eubin keeps it in play, slips a pass through, keeps the touch, a grounder, and that one off the side of the net, and that'll be a goal kick. Bobcats have had trouble tonight, just shutting down Eubin. She's been able to create on her own. Huffman, Eubin, a header straight ahead. Controlled by Chet, looking around for a pass. And the Bobcats deflect. Carol Gomez Reyes. Yuri Ramirez ahead. This is a two on four game every time it gets ahead. That one out on the far touch line with just four minutes to go before halftime, but. Cedar Falls just playing a two-on-four with that defensive back line. Bobcats have not been able to move up and find passing lanes and create. And that has created a tough situation, setting a pretty high line. We've seen a lot of defenders at least 30 yards out from goal much of the night for Cedar Falls, and that creates a tough spot. A little bit of danger right there. Yuri Ramirez will keep it in the attacking area. And she'll look to play back towards middle, but again, just the passing lanes cut down here tonight. Cedar Falls doing a superb job at that. Yuri Ramirez with the ball back towards mid. Showalter with a long chase and a clean one at that. Drop kick off the side of her foot near sideline. Touched by Cedar Falls, out, and Georgia Jansen will take the throw in momentarily. So just about 37 minutes into this first half. Bobcats still scoreless. But after a goal just five minutes into this match by Ella Eubin, Bobcats have had to defend a, a good chunk of the night, but luckily have not seeded another goal. Good play ahead to Yuri Ramirez looking for McColeman. Yeah, nothing there. Tahada. Back over to the far side. As Andrade had it, now Huffman. 
Huffman up to midfield. McKenna Coleman has it. She hits the turf, and that's going to be a penalty. Well, I saw the official on the far side raise his hand, looking like he was going to say that was Bobcat ball and a shot from way out. That will sail well over the top bar of the goal. And a goal kick to come. Two minutes to go to halftime. Chavez, no big hurry as well as Huffman to, to get this goal kick away. I think there might be a small dose of stalling here just before halftime. You would take being down one to nothing into the break, kind of regroup, maybe think about how you will attack the second half here. Jansen ahead. McKenna Coleman will tr uh, track on that one. But a bit of trouble from the penalty arc right here. A grounder right there, but covered up by Esme Chavez. Free kick away right there. The goal kick was away out on the far side touchline to throw in. 60 seconds remaining in this first half. Maybe a little pass slipping through. McKenna Coleman, some threat here right before the break. And no, that one out on the far side. Bobcats will still have a little bit of time to work with as we're under 40 seconds now. Where the ball will be put back in play with the throw in on the far side. McKenna Coleman will be the one to look to pass in. And on the throw in, misplayed. Cedar falls back with it. Yuri Ramirez back to Huffman at midfield. Looking near side, nothing there. Georgia Jansen ahead. 10, 9, 8, this one's going to sail all the way to the corner. 5, 4. And Tejada will let that one go out, and that's how we're going to end the first half of action. What a nothing. Tigers leading it as Ella Ubin. Five-minute mark in this one. She was able to put a ball in the end, in the back of the nets. Other than that, it's been a lot of defense here tonight for the Bobcats. Not a whole lot of attacking into the front half of things, but one to nothing at the break as the Bobcats a year ago in this game they were down five to nothing at halftime. So a fairly well played, but some physicality for the Tigers in that first half that the Bobcats will have to regroup and maybe think about their attack in the second half. We'll go to our halftime show. We'll look at highlights coming up. This is Bobcat Athletics. You're watching KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Rainbow Car Wash has been in town over 40 years. New owners Brett and Kim Canada have been with Rainbow for more than 35 years, focusing on quality, cleanliness, and great customer service. Open 24 hours year-round with two convenient locations. Each location has two oversized truck bays to accommodate large vehicles, all bays except quarters. And for your convenience, newly installed credit, debit, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay featuring Swiper Tap to Pay, powerful vacuums, and a great selection of vending supplies. Follow us on Facebook at Rainbow Car Wash, LLC. One nothing. Our score is the Tigers lead at halftime against your Marshalltown Bobcats. Five minutes into this one, Ella Eubin put a shot on goal and was able to get the Tigers on top. As you see that one well outside of the penalty arc. That one just a tough play right there for Esme Chavez over her head. As the Tiger faithful have traveled here to Leonard Cole Field tonight. So one to nothing at the break. Bobcats have really not put a whole lot of threats into the Tigers' defense. And 
Titans. They've only had a couple of looks that have gotten maybe about 20 yards out from goal, but really no big threats. Bobcats are 0-3 against Cedar Falls historically, and we'll see if they can break that and get a goal in the second half. This is halftime coverage as the Tigers lead the Bobcats on KFJB-TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, lennoxecu.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics.
How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. Leonard Cole Field as the Bobcats and Tigers at the break. It's one to nothing. Cedar Falls on top of Marshalltown. Cedar Falls taking the field as the Bobcats with their uh, last second adjustments for the second half behind Stacy Galima getting ready to go. Well, the officials ready to go as well as us here in the booth as uh, an exciting first half for LAU. Been a lot of shots, uh, not so many on goal, but there was one that mattered at the five minute mark. LAU been with a goal to go up one to nothing in this match. And Bobcats uh, had to do a lot of defensive uh, positioning in that first half of action, plus a lot of aggressiveness for Cedar Falls as they will begin the second half with possession. The Bobcats will have to come out uh, very aggressive here in the second half to get themselves back into this one. So at midfield, Tigers will get set and ready to go to take the kick. As a couple of Bobcats just scrambling onto the field. And it looks like we are good to go for the second half. Eubin will control and kicks ahead. That ball slips past Georgia Jansen. And they say it was just off the foot of Jansen. So out of the far sideline, it will be a throw in. And Jansen kicks that one out. No threat right there. And a throw in for the Tigers. Cedar Falls keeps it in the attacking third. Yub in trouble at the penalty arc. She takes a shot. It's deflected. Cedar Falls scrambles. Plays it back. A long shot. That one high off the crossbar. A deflection out to the penalty arc. You've been trying to load up and take a shot. Danger. Bobcats have ladies all over the place. Got to get that out of there. Eubin, it's back to her again. Takes a shot off the side of a Bobcat. Trying to get it out of there. Eubin plays it back again. Boy, just trouble right here. Aggressiveness and charging for the Tigers. Keeping it in the attacking third. Bobcats having it deflect all around and cannot get it out of there. That one on the end line and it looks like that'll be a goal kick. See as May Chavez there communicating on positioning as Huffman will be the one to take the goal kick. And he, it's right to Eubin. Yeah. 
Really good, short, concise passing for Cedar Falls here. And finally, Bobcats have had enough. Garcia, though, pushed off the path of the pass. McKenna Coleman tries to track down a loose ball, but Cedar Falls wins it right back. Garcia challenging. Can't come away with it. Out on the touchline, Bobcat throwing. Yuri Ramirez there in the middle. She was tracking on it, but good positioning by Cedar Falls. That one slips through momentarily. Gomez Reyes there for the stop. And McKenna Coleman reading that pass all the way. Into the zone. She dumps it, but four Tigers retreat and will win that one back. Back to the keeper in Showalter. Showalter taking her time getting that one away. And upfield go the Tigers. Georgia Jansen on the defensive line quickly there. Boy, she did a nice job to work upfield. And what a back for the Bobcats. Yuri Ramirez plays it into the box, but well off target. That'll be a goal kick. Emily Benneke taking the goal kick. Intercepted the pass. Garcia has it as the ball played into the box. And a clean save down to the knee. Showalter backside. McKenna Coleman was coming in for the Bobcats in case, in case there was a deflection. That would have been huge if there was. McKenna Coleman on the deflection. Plays it back towards midfield. Cedar Falls wins it back. And unfortunately not. I don't think the, the pass that Coleman was hoping for. Eubin disperses to the far side of throw in for the Bobcats. Let's say a little bit of a touch of more aggressiveness, especially by midfield and the Fords for the Bobcats here in this first five minutes of the second half. Jansen off of her out of play on the touchline. A throw in. Tigers will play in. Tahata ahead, and that one will be a throw in for the Tigers as well. A host of ladies on the far side. It will end up being Tiger possession. A long run for the Tigers. Passing lane shut down by Gomez Reyes. Garcia thought she had it. But the Tigers do. McKenna Coleman tracking on her for a second. Yuri Ramirez pops one up. Garcia tries to run underneath. It's back to Yuri Ramirez. McKenna Coleman. Long run for her, and it ends up Tiger possession with Rhea Buchanan. See you back to Ramirez. Ramirez, not quite sure where that lane was going for. Turnover, long shots. Off the mark, though. Garcia just looking for something. And she kind of slipped, and unfortunately on this turf, looked like maybe... Hyperextended a knee or something of that nature. Or just tweak something. 
She looks to be okay now. Gomez Reyes. Was looking for Kenya Gomez Reyes, but just off the mark. Bobcats finding a few more opportunities to slip through into the attacking zone here in the second half, which has been good to see. And the throw into McKenna Coleman is touched last by the defense in Emily Benicke for the Tigers. A missed touch, Yuri Ramirez over to the far side. Bryn Rostro. Not able to get there for the red and blue. Tejada boots it back into the attacking zone. Cedar Falls <laughs> plays it right back towards midfield. Tejada just boots that one. It's going to go out of play on the far side touchline. It'll be a throw in for the Tigers. At midfield, Tigers with an attack. Defense retreats for the Bombcats. It's a three on four. And a grounder to Chavez. Clean save right there. She'll run it out. Drop kick away towards midfield. And that it will be a penalty. Yes, that was definitely a pretty good shove from behind as McKenna Coleman will take the free kick as she was the one who was fouled. As the center defender, Sarah Huffman moves up. She'll take the free kick. Near side she comes. Really attacking the near side. Back towards midfield. Penalty arc. A high foot right there. We saw a penalty on the Bobcats. Georgia Jansen in the first half, but we do not see one right there. And it's back to midfield. Tigers on the counterattack. Eubin at midfield. Plays it up. Huffman up to Yuri Ramirez, but Ramirez whiffed on that one. Tigers a little one on four and played in. Chavez covers it up. That's one thing about the, um, it, the last 20 minutes or so of this match between maybe a little over that. Bobcats have forced the Tigers to take shots from way out. Not a lot of shots from Deep in the box, uh, anything of that nature. Eubin, though, with a pretty strong length, she was able to power her goal in from way far out at the five-minute mark. We are 50 minutes into this match, and it's still one to nothing, Tigers. And we'll be in action tomorrow as the Bobcats, the boys, on the road at Des Moines Roosevelt at Mediacom Stadium as Ms. Chavez covers it up. As Ms. Chavez kicks it away deep towards midfield. Towards the penalty arc, where Cedar Falls looking for something. And nothing quite there. Be sure to hit the like button here tonight for our broadcast. And be sure to subscribe. Get upcoming game alerts, show alerts, and don't miss some of our special interviews on KFJB TV. Cedar falls in the attacking zone. A misplay by the Bobcats. Tejada does get it out of there. Ramirez thought she was going to play it, but uh, seeds to her teammate up towards midfield headed. Kendall Coleman now tracking on the far side. Intercepted by Blitter Rostro. Alexi Garcia chasing and going to be fielded by Walter, the keeper for Cedar Falls. She'll roll it out. Deflected, and a nice touch to settle the ball down there at midfield by Olivia Runyon. 
And up ahead they go. Fober finds a little bit of a lane, but kicked out of there by Jansen. And on the touch line, it's going to be a throw in for Cedar Falls. Long shot taken by Grace Fober. Four goals, two assists last year for the Tigers. Two of those four goals she scored last year were against Marshalltown in this game a year ago. Bobcats definitely, and we see a penalty here. Yeah, is that what going to be of the Bobcats? A free kick to come. Eubin will take it. But you can just see the development of the Bobcats. Last year in this game, 6 to nothing, but 1-0, and we've been at that mark since five minutes into this match. An opportunity, though, for Eubin. And 25 yards out, she's off left. And outside goal, it misses. Esme Chavez watches it sail out on the goal line, a goal kick to come. Kate Hollihan is into the match as hustling off Olivia Runyon. That's substitution for the Cedar Falls Tigers. Jansen a misplay. Turnover back to Cedar Falls. Jansen getting a little bit high with that foot again on the far side. Using her uh, height and length to her advantage, that is for sure. You've been a long shot taken just outside. Mrs. Shaws may maybe not quite in the exact line to be able to uh, make the stop right there. And luckily, the score holds tight at one to nothing. Huffman back to take that goal kick. And here is Chavez yelling, uh, somebody back towards the middle. Goal kick taken, and it was right to Cedar Falls, intercepted. A long shot way off target. Grace Fober trying to take her shot. Into the match comes uh, Giselle Hernandez for the Bobcats. She'll replace Carol Gomez-Reyes, the senior midfielder, will hustle off. Huffman, her goal kick was headed up towards midfield. Garcia, I think she lost the ball right there as Cedar Falls does win it back. Garcia tries to get in position to win it back. Jansen deflects a pass. Here come the Bobcats on a counter. Come near side, and that one's going to be out of reach. Tigers will give chase. Near side corner, McKenna Coleman tracking, and that will be a goal kick. Emily Benneke will take the goal kick here in this situation for the keeper and Showalter. Headed to Eubin. Eubin attacks, trying to find a lane. Tejada cuts it off. And Garcia beat out. I believe that's going to be a throw-in, though, for the Bobcats. A little different here tonight. We've only got a couple of uh, ball boys or girls on the sideline. In the boys game, it seemed like we had about 20 people out there. I uh, want to track it down, some of those balls that went out of play. It's amazing how that will keep the game moving along. Throw in for the Bobcats here. 
Jansen will take that one. Looks for Yuri Ramirez. Misplayed and out on the touchline. And midfield played ahead. Good passing lane right there for the Bobcats. Gomez Reyes looking back towards middle. And that ball can't slip through. A little bit more height on that pass. Made a good move, but Bobcats can't do anything with it. Huffman back down to the attacking zone. Was looking for Coleman, and nothing was there. There goes Fober ahead, and it's going to be well far ahead. And Chavez on the edge of the box will cover it up. We'll run it back towards the middle. Take a bounce, and the drop kick is away. McKenna Hol uh, Coleman heads it ahead, but Cedar Falls defenders there to win it. Seems a little bit like midfielders uh, forced to not play ahead quite so much because they have to be ready for the counterattack for Cedar Falls. It's something we didn't quite see as much against North last Tuesday in our last broadcast of Bobcat girls soccer. Good attack, not shut down. Yuri Ramirez just kind of tried to get in the way, but Cedar Falls just snuck right past. Down to an ego, says May Chavez with the stop. Our next girls broadcast coming up on Monday, April 15th. So next Monday, we'll have coverage of girls soccer again against Waterloo West. Uh, later this year, we're supposed to cover on Friday, May 3rd, Bobcats taking on Waterloo East. And unfortunately, Waterloo East not able to field a team this year with numbers, so... South Tama, their match uh, later this month has been moved to May 3rd. So our broadcast night we were slated to have will still stay the same, but that'll be Marshalltown and South Tama coming up on Friday, May 3rd. That game was uh, initially supposed to be played at MCC and will now be played back here at Leonard Cole Field. That's coming up on Friday, May 3rd. That'll be our final girls' soccer match of the season, regular season. Tejada stop of the back line over to Huffman. Huffman ahead, uh, Yuri Ramirez, but you've been headed that one away for the Bobcats. Nice job by Andrade to deflect a pass. Oh, ball down to the other end. That one is nearly misplayed. Garcia was trying to take advantage of it, but Cedar Falls able to settle it down. Now Bobcats... Win a turnover and a pass ahead out on the sideline. Yes, we are 60 minutes into this match tonight between the Tigers and the Bobcats. And the last 55 have been scoreless. Tejada on the edge of the box, trying to stunt, shut down an attack by Cedar Falls. Back to Eubin. Eubin, I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass. Anyway, it was deflected. And Chavez covers up. She'll wait for her midfielders to fall back towards midfield before she boots it to the near side. Cedar Falls... Schmidt was able to uh, settle it down. Alexia Garcia almost created an opportunity and could not do so. Ball sails out on the near side, and Millie Heitman will check into the match, replacing McKenna Coleman. Dylan Hall is in for Cedar Falls, is out of the match, will go... I believe that's Willow Riley. 
And yes, it is. She's in the match, as you saw McKenna Coleman checking out. Battling here tonight for McKenna Coleman after last Tuesday, injured and did not play for a good chunk of the second half after colliding with the keeper. But played on Friday against Fort Dodge in a 10-0 victory. And uh, definitely seeing some good solid minutes here tonight against Cedar Falls. Kenny Gomez-Reyes gets involved. Yuri Ramirez up ahead out of play. Billy Hype and a kick up to really nowhere right there as it'll be back towards the middle of the field. Up to midfield, Cedar Falls goes. Yuri Ramirez shuts that down. A kick is deflected off Cedar Falls. That should be a throw in for the Bobcats here. Andrade will come up for the throw in. Actually, yeah, Huffman's going to just sit at midfield on the back side of the play here. Garcia, the intended target off of her feet, deflected. Heitman will go chase after that one, but Cedar Falls back with it quickly as Buchanan plays up to midfield. Fober turns around, fires one into the zone. And Jansen going back. I think that's going to be off the side of the foot of Jansen, but a good job by the defender to shut down the attack. As we approach the 65th minute of this match, Bobcats have really done a nice job in this second half to shut down attacks. Esme Chavez, nice stop right there off of her hands, but it goes off to the side of the net. That will be a corner kick for Cedar Falls. But a nice stop by Esme Chavez, the senior goalkeeper, to continue to keep the Tigers off the scoreboard here in the second half. Just 15 minutes remaining in this match, and uh, right-footed kicker in Zoe Zilstra was going to go on the right side and then reorganizes, and a stop by Esme Chavez off the corner kick. So no real threat right there. Esme Chavez will run out to the edge of the penalty box, boots this one back towards midfield, not able to, to uh, connect with a Bobcat. Up to Eubin, but Eubin had it slip through, and now, uh, oh boy, Bobcats almost gave one easily back to Eubin, but able to avoid a disaster right there. And now a grounder covered up by Esme Chavez. Big kick towards midfield. And uh, Cedar Falls will keep it in play. Jansen has to come up. I don't know if Garcia meant that one to go to her. Bobcats. Attack quickly shut down. We'll dump into the uh, far side by Ben Rostro. And out of the far sideline. Substitutions, McKenna Coleman and Carol Gomez-Ray is back into the match for the Bobcats as a throw-in for the Bobcats here, I believe. Jada Strom, Stroman is into the match, replacing Grace Fober, who hustles off for Cedar Falls. Much needed breather for Alexia Garcia, who has been tracking back and forth quite a few minutes here tonight. Deflected McKenna Coleman almost had an opportunity, but Cedar Falls on the far side will head up the far sideline. Jansen, though, a steal momentarily. Eubin to midfield. Good play by Gomez Reyes to box out.
Huffman launches one forward. It slips through. Bobcats will try to attack as Heitman not able to get there in time. Andrade ahead for Heitman. A couple of Bombcat ladies there not communicating maybe who was going to go after that one and not able to create an opportunity there. And officials not quite sure they're going to rule it to Cedar Falls on the throw-in. I'm not sure. That was a close one as well. That was a bit of a tough call right there on who touched it last. Eubin gets a throw-in, slips through. A little contact, though, with Huffman. Plays it around Huffman. Andrade is there, though. Kicks it out on the near side. Touchline. And a good play defensively to settle down the attack. Definitely don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with Eubin. We've seen her tonight be able to create some opportunities in those scenarios. Quick play in. Madison Chain looking for maybe a crosser right there, but stepping out is Gomez Reyes. Now here comes the crosser, but couldn't get anything on it. And out on the sideline, a throw in for Cedar Falls. Ball ahead, McKenna Coleman tracking, trying to put some pressure here, and the keeper, Showalter, just gets rid of it. Boy, I have to give the Bobcat ladies cre uh, credit here in the second half uh, with head coach Stacy Galima. They've put a little more pressure, and we've seen less of Cedar Falls just sitting in the attacking half of the field, creating a few opportunities. Seems like the defensive line has gotten a little more involved. They've shut down Eubin. She's not had a ton of shots on goal in this second half. Good to see a team growing like that. Huffman, a nice aggressive play to get that one away at midfield. It will roll out of play, and it looks like it's going to be a throw-in for Cedar Falls. As we are now approaching 70 minutes through this one tonight. And out on Cedar Falls, a throw-in for the Bobcats. Just good to see, reversing a little bit of that pressure that we saw so much in the Bobcats. That pressure has been put back on Cedar Falls here in the second half. Yuri Ramirez into the match. She'll replace Iris Buenrostro. And another throw-in for Andrade. Booted ahead, a long chase for Yuri Ramirez. Maybe an angle, and she does. Near the end of the edge of the penalty box, but just got beat out for it. She gives a little pressure back, and oh, a tough one right there. That is a tough spill, and a free kick is going to come here as Yuri Ramirez tracking on the Tiger on the far side. A tough play, but both these teams have been allowed to Maybe shove here a little bit in there and a little bit of freedom here tonight as we near just nine minutes to go. That was definitely one of the better better attacks we've seen by the Bobcat offense. I think that's going to be a throw-in for the Bobcats. Yeah, it was last touch by Cedar Falls. Into the match is Grace Forber. Yes. Also checking back in, Kenya Gomez-Reyes for the Bobcats. She replaces Millie Heitman. Looks like Madison Chain came out for the Tigers. 
And I believe that one, yeah, it's going to be off of McKenna Coleman's foot last. And a throw in for Cedar Falls. Well, I tell you what, Friday night in the, the guys match, uh, the officials were letting some quick play on those throw-ins and free kicks. Tonight, no. Not, uh, officials not letting those quick kicks and quick throw-ins. Ball slips through, but Bobcats see a Tiger hit the turf. And no threat right there as a clean pickup by Chavez. And the kick is away. A header by Eubin ahead. Georgia Jansen, though, steps in front. Huffman tries to kick the ball away. Now we'll get it out of the threat. Just feel like one, one little misplay by either team. And the Bobcats could get a goal or Cedar Falls would definitely secure the victory here tonight. Just under seven minutes remaining in the match. Cedar Falls will keep it in on the far side and take it away, stolen by Yuri Ramirez. Turn around, whips it to midfield, but taken away. Now McKenna Coleman deflects the ball, but Cedar Falls back with it. Eubin tried to catch a piece of that with her forehead, but could not do so. Schmidt will let it roll out in a quick throw in. Back and forth play on the wing. Good play. Dumped up by Fober. Fober on the left edge of the box towards the midfield, or excuse me, the middle of the penalty box. Georgia Jansen can't get it out of there. And that one might have been deflected by Tejada's foot. And no, they say it was just out on the end line. Some near trouble right there as Jansen just didn't quite get to that ball in time and it created a second chance opportunity for Cedar Falls. And the goal kick to come here. Sanchez had that one come to her. Tigers have it slip through. McKenna Coleman. Gives it back to Re uh, Gomez Reyes. Gomez Reyes tripped up. Ball at midfield. Throw in for the Bobcats. As Garcia throws in. It's kicked up. McKenna Coleman, and that one's going to be out on Cedar Falls. So a throw in upfield as the Bobcats try to get into the attacking third. Carol Gomez Reyes ready to throw in. And a little bit of a miscommunication as Andrade was picking up a ball and she was did not see her teammate had already been given one. And the Bobcats can't do anything with the throw in. Eubin looks ahead. Andrade kicks ahead into the corner and a deep throw in going to be awarded to Cedar Falls. Eubin on the edge of the box, up to the penalty arc. A shot taken, but way offline. No threats for Chavez. And a goal kick to come with four minutes into this remaining in this match. Up on the Marshalltown High B scoreboard. Brandon Lewis with you. We are at Leonard Cole Field at Marshalltown High School. Great to have you along tonight. Beautiful night. Much better than Friday night. Our camera guy, Keith, and Joe Cornwell, both uh, freezing in the elements down into the 30s on Friday night at this time. But we are much warmer. It, still in the upper 50s right now. So a bit of a heat wave, I guess you could say. The warmest game of the warmest match of the season for the Bobcats here tonight. A little bit of a misplay right there by Fober on the edge of the penalty box. Looking back towards middle and a 
Good job, though, defensively. I know Garcia did not like it, as that's going to be a corner kick for Cedar Falls, but she hustled, got there in time, and did not allow a ball to be a cross back in front of goal. And so three minutes remaining in the match, a corner kick for Eubin. And I would imagine she's going to try to bend this one in for a goal, probably not looking really for anybody here. And she will try to go for goal, and backside, Cedar Falls there, but misplayed off a foot, a header off the crossbar, Bobcat scrambling, and finally get it out of the box, a header puts it back into the penalty box, and the Bobcats will finally give way as Huffman gets it out about 30 yards from goal. Boy, what a lot of pressure being put on right there, but nothing happened, luckily for the Bobcats. Dehada back up towards midfield as Boy, all 11 are on this side of midfield. As the ball played up towards midfield, McKenna Coleman chasing. Trying to mark on her closely and win a possession back. Cedar Falls trying to close it out as they're up one to nothing with two minutes to go into this match. Ball deflected, Cedar Falls will keep it. And a clean save by Chavez. Garcia kick up field. And well out of reach for McKenna Coleman. 90 seconds. Can the Bobcats create in the final seconds here at Littercold Field as Bobcats trying to get their fifth victory of the season tonight? In their first home match, and a hard contact. And a penalty going to be called on the Bobcats. Huffman, a free kick to come. Bobcat faithful, I don't think love that call right there as Bedeke will take the free kick from the from uh, near midfield. What can the Bobcats do in 60 seconds? Yuri Ramirez dumps it into the attacking zone, but out there is Showalter. The goalkeeper, almost a misplay. Opportunity for Gomez Reyes, but it was off of her foot, and now a throw in. Cedar Falls misplays that one, but boy, Gomez Reyes almost had an opportunity open up for her. Yuri Ramirez dumps it Downfield, and that one's going to sail, sail out on the end line. And time running out as that will take away an opportunity for the Bobcats and probably all that can be done. Clock is stopped with 11 seconds as the officials do a little time wasting going on there to try to wind down the final Nine, moments. Eight, Ten seconds remaining. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, well, and a year ago, it was six to nothing Cedar Falls. The Bobcats, though, make it very entertaining tonight and in the second half created more opportunities but just could not put things together to get themselves a goal on the night. And that will be a clean sheet for Sophia Showalter, who really was not Challenged a whole lot by the Bobcat offense here tonight, unfortunately. But good defense as the Bobcats in the second half were able to, to really settle down and control Ella Eubin, who scored a goal five minutes into this match. And we went the, the rest of the way, the final 75, without a goal between these two teams. As both teams meet at midfield. Coming up, we will chat with Stacy Galima. She is the head coach for girls soccer as well as we'll recap this one tonight at Leonard Cole Field. Once again, Tigers 1-0. They moved to 1-1 on the season. Bobcats are now 4-2 with a home loss here at Leonard Cole Field. This is Bobcats Soccer. You're watching KFJB-TV. 
Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. Here's a pop up to right field. Got a bounty. Has it dives to her left and makes a huge win here at the roundhouse. A late play over to first, and they got him just in time. And a Saint Ignacio Macias. Hey, hi, Mom. <laughs> Well, the Bobcats stretching it out after the final here tonight and uh, unfortunately come up on the short end, one to nothing, as the Cedar Falls Tigers behind Alex Place and they come in town and disrupt the night for the Bobcat ladies with a one nothing victory. And this one, really a goal decided it just five minutes into the match. What what did we need to play the, the rest of the 75 here tonight? You've been five minutes into the match from way out deep. Fires one in just too high for Esme Chavez. And that was the difference in this one here tonight as the Bobcat ladies fall to the Cedar Falls Tigers. Well, again, the Bobcats fall to 4-2 and two on the season. Cedar Falls now at a mark of 1-1. One and one. We'll take another timeout. This is Bobcats Soccer. You're watching KFJB TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn's Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. To get a final in girls soccer tonight, one to nothing as Stacy Galima and her crew fall to the Cedar Falls Tigers. Our next broadcast coming up on Tuesday night. Yeah, tomorrow night we have boys soccer from Mediacom Stadium in Des Moines as Marshalltown travels to take on the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Kickoff is at 7.30. Coverage starts at 7.15 here on KFJB-TV. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at KFJB-TV. Get upcoming game alerts. And, of course, don't miss out on exclusive coverage of your Marshalltown Bobcats. We'll take a timeout. We'll try to uh, chat with head coach Stacy Galima when we come back. This is Bobcat Athletics. You're watching KFJB-TV.
Well, once again, a final one to nothing as the Bobcats take down the Cedar Falls Tigers. And we're going to try to talk to Stacy Galima coming up in just a moment as she's wrapping things up here from uh, Leonard Cole Field. As the Bobcats uh, going to be in action tomorrow night with boys. And then our next girls soccer match is coming up next Monday night as the Bobcats will be uh, taking on Waterloo West as we'll be on the road at Waterloo West at Memorial Stadium there in Waterloo. So we look forward to having that. We'll talk to Stacy Galima, head coach for girls soccer. When we come back, this is Bobcat Athletics. You're watching KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodeling. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Rainbow Car Wash has been in town over 40 years. New owners Brad and Kim Canada have been with Rainbow for more than 35 years, focusing on quality, cleanliness, and great customer service. Open 24 hours year-round with two convenient locations. Each location has two oversized truck bays to accommodate large vehicles, all bays except quarters. And for your convenience, newly installed credit, debit, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay featuring Swiper Tap to Pay, powerful vacuums, and a great selection of vending supplies. Follow us on Facebook at Rainbow Car Wash, LLC. Welcome back to Leonard Cole Field as the Bobcats fall one to nothing to the Cedar Falls Tigers here tonight. Stacy Galima, head coach for the Bobcats, welcome her in here tonight. Boy, I tell you what, Ella Eubin, uh, really tough to shut down there in the first half, but you found an answer in the second half and kept, uh, kept the Cedar Falls Tigers off the board in the second half. What was kind of your message at halftime to be able to go out there and really play uh, exceptional defense in the second half? Yeah, um, I think a lot of it was just confidence that we could do it. Um, we, we faced them before, you know, last season, and we kind of let things pile up, and I think we did a much better job this time around. You know, we were able mm -hmm. to step in and, and pressure the ball a little bit more. They were taking shots from 25 yards out rather than eight, in the 18. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just really good to see to be able to push the ball kind of back towards the middle. Yeah, and in the second half, you really got more pressure. You got a little bit more into the attacking zone. Weren't able to create anything from, you know, short range offensively, but, boy, it just seemed like you, the aggressiveness was, was matching what we saw from Cedar Falls. Yeah, um, I, I think it helped help build our confidence a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, they play a lot faster than any team we've seen so far, mm -hmm. so it took us a little bit to, to adjust to it, but I think you know, as the game went on, I think we just got better and better and were able to build on some of our you know, skills. Yeah, it was really impressive to see, knowing last, you alluded to last year, it was 6 to nothing in that match, but here tonight, you allow one five minutes in, and then the rest of the way, you go scoreless, so year over year, where do you feel like this team has really improved the most? Is it from the aggressiveness, or just understanding in the game a little bit more? Um, it's, it's definitely a combination. I think, you know, the confidence is one thing. Um, you know, the, the senior class, when, when they were freshmen, they were thrown out there. As freshmen, you were playing seven freshmen all the time. Mm -hmm. So as you just gain that experience and you've been into so many situations at that time, so you just go in with more confidence. You know that you can play. You know you can hang around with them. So it just helps, you know, build all around. Mm -hmm. How much do you think uh, a game like this, uh, you mentioned uh, a talented, speedy team. I also noticed they, they have quite a bit of height on their team <laughs> as well to be able to kind of box and throw maybe a few elbows out yep. there every now and then. But how much do you you think this game really gets you ready to go for the rest of the season? Yeah, I think it shows, you know, definitely one of the best teams that we'll probably face this season. Um, it, it gives us a good challenge. Um, we're not a team that backs down from physicality usually, <laughs> so it, it's good to have some teams yeah. to battle and, and prove that, you know, we can hang with them. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're not just going to let them come in and do whatever they want on the field. We're able to do what we want at the same time. Yeah, and uh, fun match here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, not quite there, but, boy, it just uh, second half was really fun to watch because I just thought that, that things really started to come to, together. and Almost, I feel like maybe 
two, three more minutes added to the <laughs> clock, maybe maybe could have got yeah. an opportunity late there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think they were definitely getting a little frustrated on their end, just mm-hmm. that they weren't getting the opportunities that they're probably used to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, ho- hopefully those opportunities are there for us in the future. All right. Our next match, well, broadcast of girls' soccer is coming up on Monday night. And so uh, be on the road at Waterloo, e- or Waterloo West. Looking forward to that one. Thanks for the time tonight, Stacy. Yeah, thank you very All much. Right. Stacy Kalima, head coach for the Marshalltown Bobcats. That'll wrap things up live here at Litter Cole Field. You've been watching Marshalltown Bobcat Athletics on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV.